Hello, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon everyone. Um, allow me to introduce myself. I am No Najwa from the Malaysian Timur Council, MTC, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar session. So first of all, welcome to our second MTC Timber Talk series for 2023. And I would like to thank everyone for taking time for, join, for joining our session today. And I hope that everyone is doing great as well. So I also would like to take this opportunity to wish Selamat Hari Gawai and Peta Keamatan to those who are celebrating it. So before we begin, I would like to get to know a little bit about our participants who are attending our session today. Let me know inside the chat box and kindly mention um, your company, your organization, um, who are you, or, or maybe your occupation, designation, where do you come from, or maybe are you a student, a lecturer, or maybe interior designer. Let me know inside the chat box. Please type in and uh, give me. Student. Okay, thank you so much, Laila. Okay. Interior designer, we have interior designer here. Internship, MTCC, okay. Lecturer from TAR, UMT, Ken Hua Ping. Okay, thank you so much for those response. Okay, please flood it some more. I need to know who inside this webinar session right now. Assistant architect, okay, Aida Tul. Philip Ho, uh, Timber Association of Sabah, QA manager, furniture industry, Kang Chun. All right. Who else we have here? Architect student from Penang, Tan. Okay, interesting. We have varieties of um, participants today. Mr. Ng Seh Ban. Okay, thank you so much from QS, uh, Malaysia G GBC. Hello, good day, Sharmin. FSC, Malaysia, thank you so much for attending. Okay, thank you so much everyone for your responses. It's wonderful to see that we have a varieties of audience today. Um, we have uh, students, we have um, government agencies, we have um, lecturers as well. So thank you so much for being here today. So now let's start our session. Um, for your information, over the past year, MTC has conducted a quarterly Timber Talk webinar. And if you are keen to know more about our previous webinar session, you can find our video recording uh, inside our MTC YouTube channel called MTC Timber TV. And you can access various of our videos, including our webinar as well. And do check out uh, our YouTube channel. Please like, share, and also subscribe to it. We have various informative videos over there. And also before we begin our session, I would like to cover a few housekeeping notes. Um, after this webinar, we will be conducting a live feedback poll and survey for all participants. And I would be really grateful if you could kindly provide your feedback and also um, for us to improve our future events. And if you have any questions later on for the presenter, please submit your question by typing uh, into the Q&A box or maybe you can also put it inside the chat box, okay? Um, I will later address it at the end of the presentation session. And today's session will be um, recorded and we will also upload it inside our YouTube channel after this. Um, for those that require a certificate of attendance for this session, please do let me know by reaching out to my email address, nornajwa at mtc.com.my. I will later uh, put out uh, my email address inside the chat box as well. So please do reach me if you require those certificate of attendance. And now let's proceed to the next item on our agenda for the day. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome the Malaysian Timber Council CEO, Puan Norehan Abdurrahman, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Puan Norehan, the, well, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Najwa. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to welcome you to our second webinar session for this year. And uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us this afternoon. And MTC has been hosting, like uh, mentioned by Najwa, um, this uh, series of our webinar uh, with the objective to help educate and inspire the users and specifiers out there about the numerous advantages of utilizing timber as a building material to, and to highlight the exceptional versatility of timber in built environment. 
So over the years, we have had the privilege of hosting renowned experts from the building and architectural sectors who have graciously shared their valuable insights, case studies, and personal experiences in working with sustainable materials, particularly timber. And um, these discussions have revolved around the development of architectural wonders and the creation of Zen-inspired spaces that harmoniously blend with the natural environment. So today, it is our utmost privilege uh, to extend a very warm welcome to our architect, Chu Gimboa, who has graciously accepted our request to be the speaker for today's webinar. With a distinguished career spanning over 20 years, he is a highly acclaimed architect, renowned for his exceptional expertise in design, in designing private residential, commercial buildings, and mixed-use developments. I've been informed that today's presentation will focus on the application of timber in contemporary architecture, particularly in the challenging context of hill slopes and steel terrain, steep terrains. So how we need to place a strong emphasis on the meticulous preservation of the surrounding natural landscapes to ensure the integrity of this environment while undertaking projects in such demanding terrains. So we have the right speaker today for this, which none other than architect Chu himself, who will share his remarkable success in executing beautiful private residential projects. And we have seen around the world, many architects have now increasingly incorporated sustainable features into their design. Timber stands out as a crucial determinant of the environmental impact of buildings, not only during construction, but also throughout the building's life cycle. The sustainability of timber presents a significant advantage stemming from its renewable nature and significantly lower carbon footprint compared to other materials such as concrete and steel. This has certainly positioned timber as a more environmentally friendly choice. In addition, the versatility and aesthetic appeal of timber have positioned it as a highly desirable material in modern architecture suitable for both structural and non-structural applications. So let's hear from our architect Chu later on his journey of discovering the immense potential of timber and the limitless possibility that timber could offer to pave the way for a sustainable and resilient built environment. So thank you once again for being part of this webinar series and I wish you all a truly inspiring and enriching experience ahead. Over to you Najwa. Thank you so much, Fuan, for the welcoming remarks. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, reached the main agenda of the day. It is great pleasure for me to introduce our speaker today, architect Chu Gimwa, um, who will be presenting on the topic titled Innovative Architecture on Slopes. So architect Chu holds a master's degree in architecture from Miami University and is also a member of Malaysian Institute of Architect FAM. He also has over 20 years of experience and his extensive portfolio includes numerous projects on steep slopes uh, where he has demonstrated his skills in creating homes that harmonize with the natural landscape while minimizing disruption. Architect Chu has also awarded a silver medal in the single residential category um, at the PAM Award 2021. He is also an active speaker for PAM and has conducted any design workshop, including workshop on design requirement for disabled person. He also has lent his expertise to the Ministry of Local Government Development, KPKT, in the preparation of guidelines for building requirement tailored to accommodate the needs of disabled person. So without further ado, I would like to invite Architect Chu to deliver his presentation. Over to you, Architect Chu. The floor is yours. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. My name is Chu Gimo. Uh, uh, well, uh, I've been doing this uh, hill slope project uh, for many years. And uh, let me share the screen. Huh? Okay, um, I've been doing projects in uh, hill slope for more than two decades. Uh, 
start ever since I moved to KL from Penang in 1998. Um, so at that time, I was the uh, I worked as an architect for the developer and uh, my architecture firm who does a lot of projects in, in Janabai. So it's where I start to develop a keen interest on hill slope projects. Because hill slope projects compared to say any other flat project in an urban area, it presents a lot of different challenges in in the in day-to-day -day designing uh, solution. But at the same time, because of its steep terrain, it offers opportunity that urban flat project that would not be able to provide, you know, such as view, such as uh, accessory spaces and, and various things. Uh. So it's, uh, it's been a wonderful opportunity to design all these projects and, and, and I truly learned a lot for the last uh, few, two, two, two and a half decades or so doing it with the few slope projects. So generally, um, I will present to you five projects on the hill slope on a different platform or uh, different kind of, it's almost like a five different kind of uh, case studies. Uh, okay, um, from big to slightly, from, from something very small to something slightly bigger and or, or larger, things like that. Uh, and four of the projects will be uh, private houses and one project that's still on the designing uh, designing stage, early designing stage, where I think a few freehand sketches on some of the sustainable design concept will be presented. Okay, so, um, okay, let me start with this. Okay, uh, first project I'll present, I'll just go through the briefly on the five projects. The uh, first project is a call, it's a very small project, it's a one bedroom house, one 15, one, 1,500 square feet house is called a uh, small haven and it's in, in, and it's a single story house, uh, one and a half story, I would say, hugging the terrain. Number two is uh, the deck house. This house was uh, completed almost 10 years back, but still till today, uh, I have still received inquiry and uh, from architects, from students, from owner about how to do this house. Uh, so I think this one, again, it's not a very big house. It's about 2,500 square feet interior space, and but it comes with 1,500 square feet of deck and external area. Okay, uh, and the third one is a canvas hills house. This one is a, it's a complete house. It's roughly about 10,000 square feet or so. So it has uh, three wings, it has a, a, a uh, art, you have an art gallery and then you have a private wing and you have a, a guest room. Okay, the, and then the fourth one is a fan house. This one was again uh, completed almost about 10, 11 years ago. And this one is due to the unique shape uh, that the building form was strictly uh, inspired by the curvy linear terrain of the slope. Okay, and then the last one is a new project that I, we are currently working on. It's an academic building and on, the, on, on, the, on top of the hill in part of the gender pipe. Okay, so we we'll start with project number one. Okay, project number one is, uh, okay, this is, uh, as I say, is uh, the owner and his family own quite a number of pieces of land in, in this neighborhood. Uh. So they have plans to slowly, slow, uh, slowly build some building somewhere. Uh, so this is the first experiment. So this is a small building by a very adorable, uh, I think inspiring small building. Uh. So it has a using a, a very modern rectilinear form. And then somehow during construction, we found out there's actually a few huge boulder on the side. You know? So instead of trying to move the boulder or whatever we make, that we try to we make the boulder part of the to engage the architecture. And I'll show it to you later. And then we because of the location of the house, and we try to blend the landscape by using a few layers of steps using stone wall discovered from site uh, that we mold a few uh, sort of landscape contour level leading to the house and then which makes the building sits comfortably and gently into the terrain. Okay, and then 
Also, the building construction we use a more slightly uh, lightweight construction like steel and glass and metal deck roof. So partly you can see that uh, we use uh, this steel and glass uh, metal deck roofs uh, sometimes quite frequently. So this is also to reduce the loading on the slope. Uh, so make, uh, so to, to make it easier to build and, and the, the improve on the speed and efficiency and things like that. Okay. So this is, uh, as you can see, since we talked about slope, this slide is about the slope. Uh, the building, you see this is the, the existing slope. So we gently, we cut a little bit of the slope. And then even the beginning, we, we create a few terraces using the stone wall discovered from site. Uh, and then at the back, we have two layer of stone wall. Okay, and the building generally is a two story tall, uh, sorry, one, one story, and then with a mezzanine floor, with a mezzanine floor. So this is a, this is a deck where owners spend most of his time outdoor. And then this is a living dining, and then there's a small mezzanine area. You notice that there's a window for the mezzanine floor looking out. And then this is a master bedroom. As a result, the master bedroom or the only bedroom is turned out to be very high ceiling. And then this is the only one bathroom on site. This is the bathroom with the water tank on top. And then there's a big, huge boulder discovered on site. And then they turn out, they locate a tub next to the boulder. Let me go back to the previous slide. Okay, you, you sometimes you'll notice why the, the roof is pitched towards this way. As I say, around here, right around this corner, owner and his family own quite a number of uh, pieces of land. So some of the, we adopt some of the window here, and then this is the mezzanine here. So this window in the future, then the owner will be able to look at uh, some of the other building on site uh, in the future. So as you can see here, owner and his family spend most of their time on this deck. And I was told that sometimes they even have a tent here, you know, when kids are up here, they, they sleep outside. Okay, so this is a sketch of the overall development. So it's essentially, if you look carefully, it's almost like a kampong house, you know, but it's a modern interpretation of a kampong house where you, you create a few platform here. This is an entry platform, um, entry platform, which you can see on, on this picture here. And then going up a few steps, going a few steps to the main platform outside the, the, the main, main floor area. So you enter and you have the dining room, there's a kitchen and there's a small living room. Yeah, and then the, you see the dot 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 here, it's all a mezzanine here with a spiral staircase. And then this is the master bedroom and master bathroom with a bathtub on top. Okay, so in short, even within the interior space of the single volume itself, we we divide the volume into a few segments uh, so that the space is uh, more interesting. And uh, yeah, and then I was, the owner told me how his kids use a space here is quite interesting. So they have a TV cabinet here, right? So he said he found out that actually his kids don't usually sit in the sofa here and watching the TV. What he found out that actually the kids love to sit on the spiral staircase and watch TV. So this is one of the surprising effect that uh, I guess we achieved. So as you can see from this photo, the whole thing is very simple, very low key. And then this uh, dark gray facade, they are equitone cladding material. So we use some of it as a safe construction. This is steel and glass. This is steel. And then some of it is, is concrete. Now. Some of it cannot be avoided. We use concrete, especially those uh, functional areas. Then we use a, 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 a brick wall and things like that. So this is the living room looking out to the terrace. It's beautiful. And then you see the layering of stone wall to be create uh, this uh, to mold the level leading to the house. Uh. And then I think what is interesting is the whole timber deck here is elevated and can deliver off the ground. So it's the whole thing is like floating. You know, it's this like uh, this lanterns floating and sit lightly touches the terrain. Uh. Okay. So this is some of the interior space. Huh? So we use all this, uh, we don't, we try to avoid this heavy concrete construction interior wise. So we use the timber joists, timber, timber beam support. And then we use a timber, timber, timber deck, timber board on top to create a floor. So this is quite an interesting way of constructing uh, it. And then it looks lightweight and then it's a uh, look, 
uh, even though it's modern, so it incorporates some of these all these traditional building construction that we used to do in Malaysia. Lah. Okay, and then this is fire staircase, and this is where the kids love to stay. Uh, and, and then this mezzanine is, uh, I was told that this is an activity for the kids. Huh? So from this space, you see the, the pitch roof going up, uh, going up, and then you can view the uh, other aspect of the property. Huh? Okay. Um, so this is a sketch of the, how the ventilation works. Because of the mezzanine and the tall window, so it, it can ventilate quite nicely. Huh? The hot, hot air can go up. And then this is the boulder on site. And then the, the door is a single pivoted, large pivoted door uh, and surrounded by glass. Uh, so this is uh, the boulder that is covered on site. This is original, we never touch it. Uh, don't dare to touch it. So, and then the level of the adjacent land is slightly higher. So this is, uh, and then owner even have a bit of fun, create a water feature on top of it. So you can turn on, uh, turn on they, they recycle some of the water, then they turn on the water, then there's a waterfall coming down. Uh, it's quite, quite lovely. And then, uh, and then as is, uh, this, is an, uh, this is actually the master bedroom and then deck outside. So the deck surround the building on all sides, you know, front, but for this area, they have a private deck. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so coming back to this, you see, and then for, for this side and on this other side, it's quite public. But if there are times that they don't feel like looking at people or at the time they want to have some privacy, they go to the deck here. That means the deck facing the boulder here, which is here. Nah. It has some private deck area. And then at the private deck area, uh, they even put a nice uh, bathtub here. You know? So I think it's quite unique, nah, this kind of experience. Okay, this is another layer or uh, another few method of how to deal with timber. This is a uh, Timber support anchor to the I beam. Uh, this is I beam, and then uh, we use a steel bracket uh, to anchor weld well to the I beam. Okay, and, and on top this is a timber board. I think it's about 30, 38 mm thick timber board. And then the spiral staircase is also uh, the main the main structure is steel, and then we use a 40 mm thick timber board. Uh. Whereas the roof eave, external roof eave, again we, this is a Benyato, Benyato, uh, Benyato ceiling because this one uh nyato tang and wood board and this one i believe is like a mobile things like that so it's a we utilize quite a bit of timber in we try to use it in a more sort of like a sustainable kind of way okay so this is the house in the deck house uh, this is a unique house in the sense that i think 12 13 years ago the owner came to me, he wanted to design a weekend house at that time. A weekend house where <clears throat> they only need about two bedrooms, only two bedrooms. So, <clears throat> and they like to have an area in the basement where they can do their artwork. So, and then the building, this site compared to the first site, the first site is, uh, is well exposed, you know, that means you drive on the road, you can see the whole site. But this one, if you drive on a public road, the then the pub, after the public road, it slopes down. As you can see here, it, you know, public road is actually up here, right up here. So it, the, the slope continuously go down like that. You know? So meaning that the, the location of the building is, you, it cannot really be, be seen uh, from the public road. So, and then for, on this side, there's a lot of existing trees. So the, the idea is slightly different from the first one that uh, we try to have the building gently touches the slope. Okay, gently again, gently touching the slope, and then the owner will, will get one to get some privacy for this house that uh, they don't want the people in the you know, in the public road to be able to see directly into, into it. But at the same time, they want to enjoy the ambience of the forest, uh, you know, the forest setting, and most importantly, they want to be able to to feel connected directly to the to the forest. So coming back to this, so we, we thought about the first thing is like we're inspired by the site. The second thing is like how to create a building that normally for a building, uh, the moment you enter, you want to have a living and dining, right? So meaning that given this contact, if we do so, then the, the building would have to set way up high. You know, way up high, then with a lot of long stilts. Huh? 
So this long steel is uh, sometimes quite uh, unnecessary and then also aesthetically it may not be so pleasing. So with this, so we thought maybe we press, even this the slope is like that, we press the living and dining room one floor below. So to make it uh, at the lower ground floor. And then, uh, excuse me. And then we have a, at the lower ground floor area, we want to have a, some kind of infinity deck. Right? Because for most bungalow, the, uh, the luxurious element, they want to, for most bungalow owner, they want to have is an infinity pool. But this one, we turn it around. We why don't we have an infinity deck? Uh, okay, uh, infinity deck, deep go perch can deliver deep into the jungle. That uh, hopefully, when uh, around that area, one can almost uh, touch the tree or the some of the branches, the leaf. Okay, so this is how the concept started. But as I say, the building is quite small. A two bedroom, two bedroom house, one on the highest level, the other one on the second, uh, on the lower ground level. Okay, so this is how it works. So this is a public road here. Then you drive down slightly, and then this is the location of the building. Uh, this one is uh, somehow they supposed to have the face face two, but I think they didn't get to it. So okay, as you can see here, it's a driveway going down to the side. And even the driveway, is a, this driveway is not very wide. It's about maybe three and a half meter, things like that. So in the center, we even planted some grass uh, to try to make, invite the landscape into the driveway. And then this is the location of the building, as you can see here. It's a small flat area, and then this car park, and then you enter, if there's a bridge, you enter the building. Okay, so essentially the concept is like that. You come in, the park, you walk over the bridge, this is a, a first concept, uh, one of the first concept. And at, then, at that time, we still don't know what is the dimension or whatever. So this is the first concept, but amazingly towards the end, this original concept uh, mostly are maintained. Uh, so this for, for architect, this is quite a, quite a good thing. Uh. So you come into here. So the original, then there's a one master, bed, master bedroom here. Then you go down. Then there's a living and dining room on this level, and then there's a big cantilever deck coming up. Okay, then this is another guest room here. But the only difference is that eventually the engineer uh, don't allow the stilt to tilt at such a great degree. Lah. So we had to make it uh, slightly more gentle. Okay, um, so as you can see here, you come up the bridge, then you walk down, there's a void here. Okay, then there's a big, huge cantilever deck. So you can see from interior space, you come down, this is the only void. This void is actually not to say, not to say that big, but it looks really big because of the space around it, you know. Um, so, and then you have a huge deck can deliver out, can deliver out. So you can see that this is a living, a small dining and a small kitchen. Together with the deck, it forms like almost like a, a one continuous platform. Okay, of course, this is a timber floor finishes, and then this outside is all timber deck. Right? But together, it looks like one space, you know, and then it's almost like seamless. Right? And they build it so nicely, the detailing is that like the indoor timber and the outdoor timber, all, almost like seamless. Right? You cannot see the difference. So if you look at the floor plans, like that the staircase come down, living room, dining, small kitchen, there's a powder room, and then you have one one small get bedroom here, then this is a big can deliver that here. Okay. So, okay, so it's interestingly when you are standing outside the deck here, you can see you can touch the tree. You know? So I was there many times, this is quite nice. Huh? It's, it's almost unbelievable. Huh? Okay, then you find that, actually you find that huh, in Janabai, for most bungalow that I, completed, owner told me they spend most of the time outdoor sitting on the deck, unless it's a heavy rain. Even the first project also the same, so it's a deck area. So I guess in a sort of this uh, jungle uh, environment, the deck, you, the owner will spend most of the time getting engaged with nature, uh, unless it's a monsoon drain or rain or something, then it will come in. Okay, so this is uh, the upper floor when you arrive after going through the bridge. There's actually, uh, the latest one is one big bedroom. Uh, they combine two into one, one big bedroom. 
and then outside there's one big terrace. Okay, so the, the sound of the terrace, when you look down, you see the infinity tag below. You see, it's just right next to two big trees. Okay. Then, uh, so in short, the view of the forest is important. You can see the view of the forest from almost all corners of the building. Okay. For this project, it's, it's important to note that actually the owner re, uh, maintained most of the trees on site. Uh, you know, uh, what you see here is all the original tall big trees. Uh, okay, and then okay, and then also there's a louver on top, so uh, the, all the hot air can escape on top. Uh, uh, the hot air rises and can escape, so it fits the tropical climate quite well. Okay, so this is the original sketch. Uh, uh, the how how the the formulation of the space living room with the infinity deck going up front, perching on top of you. Okay, so this is a master bedroom with a glass looking down and then the dining room, another bedroom. And then we try to use as much as we can some kind of uh, lightweight construction material, steel and glass huh, here. Of course, this one, um, some of you, uh, I know a lot of, some of the viewers will ask that, um, if a two or three sided in glass, would it be very warm? So the answer is actually in our tropic, in a, in a, we are slightly spoiled in being in a genobite, it's surrounded by trees. So it's not to say, it's not to say that warm, but with so much glass, I think if this, is, if this project is located in Shala or Subang or in Klang Valley, then the architect would probably have to be quite careful. I mean, Tone down on some of the glass facing the sun slightly. Okay. Uh, so this is a view from the bottom of the side looking up to the house. So this is how the whole deck was worked. So this is a slanting column. This is an RC. From RC, we use steel structure above the seat. Some of the steel can deliver out. And then, of course, on, on top of the steel beam, we have a series of timber joists and timber deck. So to get this very clean look, clean, uh, uh, well detailed, uh, document, documented uh, timber deck, we have layers and layers of material. Uh, we have a timber deck. Below timber deck is timber joists. And below timber joists is, is still I need to support. Uh. So actually it's not as easy as the one is uh, imagined uh, uh, to, to make it look seamless. Uh. And then this is a, uh, this is a bedroom, and then this huge cantilever roof on top. Uh. Okay, and then this again, you can see all the stone wall are discovered from site. Uh. Then one thing in Janabai is uh, all the stones uh, that we find is quite different from the stone we found elsewhere in 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 in, in, in Slang or okay. KL. And then the stone color is the, the color is very warm, so it gives that kind of warm tone and warm feeling. And, and aesthetic to the whole project. Uh. You see, the color is, is, is not, whereas you get from somewhere in Slango, it's like whitish, grayish, things like that. Uh. I mean, each one of them, they have their own value. Uh. Okay, the third project is the, the Canvas Hill residence. This is, a, you know, this is a, I believe it's about quite a large, uh, a larger house, the build up is about nine to 10,000 square feet with, uh, with a large um, external area, a like balcony, like deck, all these things. So this site is a unique site, you know. Um, let me, maybe, maybe, huh, maybe I'll explain on the site again. So this is a public road. So I know this owner for many, many years. I did his uh, first house uh, about 20 years back when I was working for someone else. So this, he approached me in uh, 2016 or 2017. He just bought this new piece of land, very excited. And then on this new piece of land, um, there is a, a small platform here, original platform, as you can see from here, it's slightly, slightly fat, uh, flatter. Whereas the, the contour is, it's not very steep, but it's gently going down, see, gently going down, go down here. And then someone, the previous owner, owner already cut a small drive area up to here. But from this area, this, so later on turned out to be a car park. Car park from here to, to here is about the height of five-story building. 
okay, five story build, five or six story building. But from here, going up to the living room level is about another two to three story building. So you see the level. So it create, and then at, at this angle here, looking this way, on a clear sky, you can see the big development, the big climate. Okay, but when you are on this level, on the surrounding, this one you see Genting Highlands, and this side you is tall enough you can look at all like some of all this horizon view, which is equally as nice. Huh? So the, the building, the design is such that we want to be able to come up to this flat area. On the flat area, of course, it's a living dining and a pair of a, a guest room. But at the same time, on the way coming up here, on the way coming up here, the owner is a quite a prominent artist. He want to create an art gallery of his own, and then also a place where he can paint. Okay, so the so this whole the design brief is very simple. He want to have an area for his art gallery where he will intercept the visitors from car park coming up. Then his own residential is on top of the gallery. And then at the same time, he want to have a pair of guest room on adjacent wing so that when he travels overseas, his family and friends can continue to use this uh, guest room without disturbing the, uh, or intrud intruding into the main private house. Huh? So this is how it came about. So essentially this project is for three usage. Huh? Okay, for usage number one is at a lower ground level. Right? I'll show you other photograph. There's an artist gallery. Okay, then you come up. This is a private house where this whole wing is a living dining kitchen, and then the owners with uh, his family member. There are three bedrooms here, and then the guest room is at this corner. Okay, so this is an entrance. It's an entrance entrance hall. So normally, when we enter a house, we always enter a house. In whether enter a house is supposed to you turn. You have some kind of, when you enter, usually there's no view, right? You enter, then usually there's storeroom, shoe cabinet, or maybe a small powder room, things like that. But this one being in Janabai and open to relate to nature, we want to be, uh, I thought it would be interesting is like, when you enter an entry hall, first thing you see is landscape, you know. Then you turn right into the private area or you turn left into the guest room. So the, the, the sequence of space, uh, movement, circulation is slightly different. And use the landscape and the natural terrain as a focal point instead of building as a focal point. Okay, So that's why because of that, then we thought what would be, be cool is actually you have a traditional sort of a Chinese courtyard. It's there. Because remember, we talk about three usage, three usages. A traditional courtyard is there to unite the public, uh, sorry, public space coming out here, and then the private area and semi-private. Uh. And then throughout this whole building, we have big, huge cantilever roof here, especially here, cantilever, quite, quite significant. And then we have cantilever deck here, uh, so that owner can, can enjoy all the view. And then the building material, uh, as usual, we, we try to use something a bit more authentic and rustic and raw. You know? So we use uh, off-form concrete, some selective uh, red brick walls, selective uh, not not uh, fair face brick and uh, a lot and some uh, a lot of timber support and deck. Uh, okay, and then of course the uh, important need to capture the view, uh, the beautiful view of Jennifer. So we are explained here. So uh, this is to see how the whole thing comes. Basically, this is a driveway going up. Uh, there's a small parking area here. From here you go up here, and then the beginning of the entrance is on this wing. Uh, so this is, as you can see, the three, as I say, this is the first wing. This is a artist gallery, living dining kitchen here. And across the, across the courtyard is the guest room and then the three bedroom. Oh, there's actually an infinity pool here. So uh, this is, it captures the essence of the design. It's on a small hill terrain, you go up, then go, this is a basement semi-basement, not really basement, set lower down floor for artist gallery. And then this is a living dining kitchen, all these things. And then the bedrooms are here. And then the guest room is here. Okay, so this one, it tucks the hill. And then some of the stone wall we discover on site, we use it to, to protect the, the, the slope and 
flat the retaining wall. Okay, so consistently we have decks everywhere, and then also we have louver on top uh, for ventilation. So you can see the building form is like that. You see at one one end here is a so like a is a courtyard. Yeah, this is the entrance again. Another photo. Okay, so coming out, this is a residential. Huh? This is the courtyard. Huh? Okay, this is a living dining room. This is a private room. You see that all the louver on top for hot air to escape. And then this is a two uh, bedroom, two, two guest room, two number of guest rooms. So meaning that it's separated by this very nice and pleasant cozy courtyard. And then there's an infinity pool here. So meaning at any one on a clear sky, when you're standing here, you can look at the Gunting Islands on, on, the fast, on the far end. And then again, we use all the uh, steel structure. Uh, you see? This, uh, this is an extension of experiment from the deck house. We use steel anchor to the concrete beam. And then on top, we have steel support. And then after steel support, we have layer of timber support and timber deck. Uh. And even the handrail, we use a more uh, rustic kind of micro mesh, sort of like an expanded metal uh, uh, handrail. Okay, this one can explain to you a bit more on the layout. So coming out here just now, right? Coming out here, the first layer you come across, this is a public area with the artist gallery. Right? And then owner paint at this corner. This is his private painting studio. And then there's a staircase for you to come out here. You arrive at this is a, officially the ground floor. Then this is like a traditional moon gate. Moon gate now, which is you can see here, the moon gate. So from one moon gate, one end, this is the living dining room facing on one side, facing the courtyard, on the other side, facing the horizon. Then this is the a pair of guest room here. And there's an infinity pool here. And then the highest level is the three bedrooms on top. So, and then this is, this area is, uh, is, uh, is right here. This area is uh, where owners spend most of their time here. You know, so to, to have uh, their meals, to, to entertain people, things like that. As I say, you can see this amazing view here. Okay. So what is interesting, your owner always tell me that uh, for those people that he, when he have time, he will invite people to sit here, to drink some tea and to chit, do some chit chatting. But when he's in a rush, he will invite you to sit inside. So when, you, when he asks you to sit inside, then you know that you please don't stay for long. Okay, so and then this all these uh steel, steel and steel and timber construction, you see here. And then there's a lot of wiring coming up here. So we use timber board to clap this I-beam column so that it, it so that all the wiring can be concealed. And then the timber board can also secure some of the light fittings. Uh, okay, so this is uh, another view of the courtyard. As I say, this is a living dining area, bedroom area, and a guest room here. This courtyard is really, really cozy. I think I, I really like this courtyard. And then he even have this small, small little corner here. He said this is his breakfast area. I guess there are so many areas where you can have breakfast or dinner or lunch. Then, but anyway, the space is his. It's up for him to, to experiment. This is another view of, it, of the deck area. See, he's there drinking some tea, uh, and then this is some of his artwork. Okay, um, this is just a, a bit of additional point on uh, on the detailing. As an architect, we all try to experiment experiment on different detailing. So for this house, we thought it's interesting. You see, normally you have a use one I beam and support now, but for this I beam, I cut the I beam into half. You know? So you become a T, like a two T's. So from this two T, I arrange them nicely next to each other. Then I create a, a fin kind of support, a steel fin kind of support, you know, to, so that to let the timber board sit on top of the fin. So the whole thing, it looks like a butterfly. You know? So if you see, this is just one of some of the small things that we architects do to have some fun, okay? It's two T's and then it's a butterfly support and timber box sits on top. 
see if the butterfly support things like that. So try to do something a bit different. Uh, okay, so this is coming going up to the upper floor. And then this is uh, in the living and dining room space. Uh. So as you can see from this side, you're looking at a courtyard. On this side, you're looking at horizon. Uh. This is someone is painting. Okay, the fourth project is a project that I thought is highly unique. Um, because when we are doing on all this hill slope, each hill slope is different, you know, whether it could be uphill, could be downhill, or if the, the some some of the slope, the terrain is going up and down evenly, gently, some it, it, it shakes, you know, it twists, the slope twist, turn, twist, turn. It's like now I'm doing a project, it's uh, halfway done, the slope bend, you know, bend almost at 90 degrees at one corner. So it created interesting opportunities. Huh? So for this project, project number four, or that um, case study number four, uh, the whole terrain is slope, you know, it's curved. So this is another very unique house. Uh, I did this, finished this about maybe 10, 11 years ago. The whole terrain is curved. So, and then other than the curvy terrain, there's two flat area, which is, I think I'll go to the next slide now. See, this is coming into the side. See, you see the whole terrain is curved, especially here. You see, it's, it's a bend around. And then, and then from here onwards, it starts bending downwards, you know. So the whole slope from here going down is all curved, very drastic curve. So on site, there are two small flat platforms here. Two, and they are about eight meters apart. Now. So you can see here, you drive in here, right? See, the first curved area, second curved area, flat, flat, flat area. Uh, flat platform here, and then the, the terrain is all curved. Huh? So I thought looking at it, this is a one very rare opportunity where, frankly, you can de develop a building with this kind of curvy linear form. Huh? Okay, so coming back to this, as you can see here, so the, the building design is then uh, to minimize earthwork, to minimize uh, excavation and all these things, we I thought it's essential you let the building sit on top of the existing platform. You know? Exactly. We don't cut the platform, we let it sit. And anyway, the, the differences in height from the top to the bottom platform is approximately 8 meters. So 8 meters is just nice, uh, almost like a two-story building. Uh. So we came up with this uh, uh, program. You park your car here, then you go across a bridge. That's the thing when you, when you do a downhill slope building, you always have the opportunity to do a bridge. Huh? And then uh, the sound of the deck house is also a bridge. And so you do a bridge into this. But for this project, the living dining room is all here, first of all. Then there's about three bedroom on the lower ground floor, number one. And then the lower ground floor, number two, is where the entertainment, where the entertainment area is and the main room. Huh? Okay, again, the view is pretty spectacular. Because as a result of this, the whole building form, it becomes like a butterfly shape, you know, like a fan shape and butterfly at the same time. Even later on, I'll show you, even the roof, due to the butterfly shape, we have to custom make uh, this roof to cater for this uh, fan shape design. Huh? Because we cannot use a normal corrugation uh, like that, because all rectilinear, huh? then they will not gel together. Okay, so this is uh, one of the first projects that actually I try. Uh, normally, you know, as an architectural student, you always talk about form follows function or vice versa. But this is actually, we would call it form follows contour. Short contour dictate the building form and, and subsequently layout and design. Okay, the next one, as I, as I say just now, you park your car, it's roughly about seven and a half meters or eight meters. Huh? So coming in, you have two story in between, just nice, okay. So in short, you can see the whole building is like a fan shape. That's why I call it a fan house. And then even from the slope looking up, it's even the balcony, the terraces, all a series of curves shape. But this curve shape presents all the bedroom also at the radiating, uh, the bedroom is all like, also radiating out. It's not a square space. Huh? So during construction is uh, also not easy to coordinate, uh, but it, we, the final outcome is quite 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 a handsome building. Huh? And then this is the main 
main uh, balcony in which we can deliver out a lot more. Okay, this and uh, you can see the shape of the building. Okay, this is a solar solar hot water, and then this is a few bathroom here. You can see the bathroom here, and then this is a kitchen, and this is a and then within inside this is the corridor circulation here, and then we have tall glass on top. Uh. Okay, it's a stair staircase going down. So the staircase is also curved, uh, but this time a concrete staircase. Okay, then the last project that I'll be talking about this is a new project that we are working on. Just started about maybe a month, a month and a half ago. Uh, interesting project. Uh, this is not a bungalow. This is an academic building. It, it consists of some administration and some uh, a big, a big, a big lecture hall. Okay, so what they intend to do is a. Uh, they want to go back to the basic, you know. Um, they want to go back to this very basic Malaysian tropical architecture vernacular style. So, and then and they want to try to use as much as possible the local material, you know, like wood, uh, stone, whatever that we can discover locally. And most importantly, if if possible, those construction material we can uh, discover on site, uh, like timber, stone for sure, and all these other things. So again, we go back to basic, like this kind of local vernacular architecture ventilation. You know, you have a few layer of roof, you have jack roof, so that ventilation, you can the hot air can rise, and then the hot, you know the cold air can come in, hot air to rise, and then you get uh, lighting from different layer layer of space. Uh, you know, like like natural lighting can come in from top. Coming from side, coming from the side door and window, things like that. And then some of the stone discovered on site, we can use it for cladding, for as a retaining a for low retaining wall, things like that. So all this thing is, is quite wonderful. Uh, and hopefully we can find some nice timber. We can use it for deck uh, or for some of the um, some of the local construction methods. Uh. Okay, so and then this one as a lecture hall, it needs to be quite tall. So the full volume, then you then you can look at the view all around. So which you which will be because being in, in because being in in Janabai, you always want to have some connection with the nature, especially the forest around. Okay. Oops. Okay, so the layout we were thinking at one point you have a series of buildings. This is the main main roof. With uh, some jack roof sticking out, and then we have a corridor. In short, this is a very local kind of a kampong house kind of concept, but you use it in a, in a very large building. Uh, you have many multiple layer of roof, so then there's a corridor on all side, so the the teacher and the student can mingle around on the outside, and then there's a you know, also an external corridor linking to other part of the building, and then it's surrounded by landscape here, maybe. Even a, hopefully a water feature, then we use a, a stone wall to mold the level, to mold the level towards the building line. Yeah. So anyway, and then if possible, we puncture some of the, the slab to plant the tree, things like that. So as you can see, this is a, another sketch. You know, this is our very local sort of colonnade system, supported by all the old colonnade, and then this is a multiple layer of roof. Hopefully that we can find enough uh, timber, we can uh, maybe use it for some of the smaller columns, things like that. Uh, I think the sounds from the client, they are quite confident that uh, they can find, maybe not, not for the main big building, but for all the corridor on the side, things like that. Uh. So again, this is quite cute then, because they were talking about a bathroom. Uh, so usually bathroom has always been the ugliest part of the site, uh, and then you have no ventilation, no view. So I thought maybe, since you are you are inside the jungle, why don't you create a small a cute hut? You know? So where you use a stone to clad the bathroom, and then even have a nice view into the bathroom, and then you have ventilation on top. You have this very very nice uh, roof. So the experience of going to the bathroom may be something, or it will always be remembered. Uh, uh, even you have an infinity deck at the end of the bathroom, you can after after using the bathroom some. 
they may want to go there I don't know to, to, to chill or to have a secret break or things like that. Okay, so this is my talk. Uh, so <laughs> this is the end of it. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much, Architect Chu, for that very uh, insightful presentation. So it is uh, always inspiring to see the impressive work uh, showcased in your project. Uh, now let us proceed with the Q&A session. Uh, just a reminder, please send your questions uh, via the Q&A box or, or you can also put it inside the chat box and we will address it as uh, many as uh, possible. Um, so let's see um, the first question that we have here. Um, Architect Chu, how do you ensure the safety of house with big rocks on the slope being very close to the house? I think this one referring to the first house, small heaven, the big rock. Okay, um, good question. <laughs> um, some of the big rocks, this time uh, from experience, uh, many years ago I did on one project you know, in Janabite, most of the land, they are one acre big, uh, one acre, one acre is about 44, 45,000 square feet, it's huge. They found out there's a one big rock in the whole site, you know? whole site, but through about half of the site is considered one rock. So it's mega, you know, so, and then it's really huge. And then they were thinking about how to build it, uh, you know, how to build the foundation on top of a rock. So you, you don't want to drill, you don't want to hack, you don't want to have definitely no explosion, no explosive. So what the, the engineer and the contractor did, did at the time, it was quite quite creative. So they, they still go with a simple uh, footing. But what they do is they, they below the footing where it touches the rock because they're afraid that it will slip. Yeah. So they drill steel bar into the foot, uh, into the rock, steel bar, and then the steel bar and anchor and epoxy grounded to the footing. Uh, so that it locks in the footing. Uh, and then that building has been there for 20 years and it's so far it's, it's strong. So coming back to your question, um, what the, the big rock boulder that you see, if it's the original one, then, and then it doesn't show sign of movement, and chances are number one, it could be part of the bigger rock, you know. That means below next to it, there could be a mega piece of rock. So as long as it shows sign of that it's not moving, then it's quite safe. Huh? Of course, in life we cannot guarantee that huh? there's no guarantee anything in life. <laughs> By looking at it, it's very stable. And then even this first project is been completed. Uh, it is completed right around COVID. So until now it's three years and, and there's no movement whatsoever. I mean, things like that, you, you, you bound to, sometimes you bound to see uh, and then, uh, in, in, in a hilly terrain because even when you do surveying, you cannot survey what is underneath the soil. You know? Right? So, in, in short, um, you try to work around it and, uh, and try to use some um, in, indigenous way uh, to try to, uh, to fit the architecture around that, that part. So, that's why, even as I say, um, if possible, I try. If possible, I try to make the, the building slightly lighter, so that it's easier to build. And then the loading onto the slope of the land is slightly less, huh? because it's quite different when you have a concrete flat roof as a roof compared to metal deck roof. Huh? But there are there are cases where the slope is quite stable. Now I'm doing a one one one, one house with uh, the whole building is a con concrete flat roof. Huh? There are, there are times where this is required. Huh? Okay, so generally it, it's something like that. Huh? So. Yeah, I hope that answer the question. Um, okay, next question we have here. Thank you, Architect Chu, for a very interesting talk. How do you deal with infrastructures, namely water, electricity, storage? Okay. Um, for, for in Tanarimba, like um, the road, the public road is there. So what the owner did was the owner, uh, the developer, they prepare water and electricity up to the front of your lot. Okay, so in short, your, your land area, so they will prepare right to the front. But of course, the location you have to ask them about because so in terms of uh, water, electricity is there. 
you know, it's there. So nothing to worry about. But sewerage, usually they use a septic tank. So they should be able to solve it. Yeah. But there are some cases, there are some land. Luckily, some, some of the project, they found some groundwater, you know, some natural groundwater. So uh, a lot, most of the time when the owner found they have some groundwater, they are very happy. Uh, they usually try to create a small well to keep the groundwater. Some might ask them, what, what are you going to do? Are you going to drink them? And then maybe, you know, because those groundwater are quite pure, uh, full of minerals and things like that, but not, not often. Uh. Okay, um, next question. Sir, architecture, what is the most challenging aspect of maintaining the buildings built on the slopes? Hmm. I think maintaining, I think it's very basic, you know, because you, frankly, a slope, if you maintain it well, the building on the slope, then it is very stable. Then probably there will not be any soil erosion or failure, things like that. Huh? Because you see, you read in the news all the time, slope failure or some disaster, things like that. It happens. But as far as the landowner is concerned, if they do their due diligence, simple things, you know, like you maintain your long term, your drainage well, you, it, it doesn't clog. Because every time you clog, then it overflow. Then it start to wash away the topsoil. The, the, it start to create erosion. Uh. So once you have, have started to have erosion on any slope, no matter how big or small the erosion is, this beginning of a problem. You know, it's a very, sometimes could be a very big problem. Uh. So the, 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 the thing is you try to maintain it as well as you can. Uh. So simple thing, as I say, like drainage and all these are super critical. Uh. Then you would not have the big problem ever. Uh. Because I've seen some of the owner who've been staying there for 20, 30 years, no problem, uh, no problem. But of course, sometimes if you are lucky, your neighbor start to do something funny, you know, so, and it's uh, quite unfortunate. Uh, you know. But as far as you're concerned, you, you protect the infrastructure around your area, then chances are quite okay. Uh. Then where is the uh, mean, where and, ten, where and tear of the building, it's just like any other building in the Klang Valley. Uh, you know, so you have to take care of your building. Uh. Okay, from Mr. Ang Seban, how much each house owner pay to build their dream house at the end? <laughs> this one is private. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's getting more and more expensive uh, due to you know uh, the, the, the inflation. Uh, it's getting more and more expensive. So, uh, but it's a uh, but building on a flat area compared to the soap area, of course, there is always slightly more expensive. Uh. Okay, uh, from Jose, Josephine Lim, when do you design uh, for slopes project? Do you do any soil or slope stability testing and judging the surrounding area? For example, where there are other projects that may cause landslides or maybe landslide near Genting Highlands and last year? This is a very big question. <laughs> <laughs> no, because for us, we are architects, you know, um, Usually the client, when they purchase the land, they'll come to us. The client would have done their due diligence, uh, you know, on the land, on the land surrounding the site. But, uh, but coming back to the basic of the land, uh, what I find that, uh, of course, in uh, Malaysia, uh, authority, uh, when you do the submission, anything above 25, 30 degrees is, is, is considered very steep. Uh, and then the, the approval process is also uh, a lot more difficult. Yeah. So that's a, uh, then you will take a lot longer to get approval. Uh, and you may even get to do a lot of very expensive tests. Uh. But generally for us, uh, when we look at it, uh, as far as say some guy buy a piece of land, come to me, then I will look at number one, if you get the land to survey and look at uh, the profile of the land, then you look at it. Number one, how to cut, uh, uh, if you need a driveway to go up to your building, how to cut the driveway up, okay? Then the second thing is, uh, is there any platform that the owner required, uh, uh, say at mid-level or at a lower level or the, at a higher level? 
because I've done some building where the say the building platform they want to maximize the view, they locate the building on the highest part of the hill. You know? It's like 12 story building tall. Imagine a 12 story apartment, and then your building is on top. So at the end, the infrastructure, the, the road going up to the building is cost more money than building. So it's, that is a bit difficult. Uh. So coming back to this, um, you have to look at the overall impact. Uh. Uh, of course, when you buy a piece of steep land, um, then the, the slope protection, the test, everything will be a lot more. Uh. But usually steeper land is slightly more, slightly cheaper. And then usually the steeper land is almost certainly that you don't have a neighbor. Uh. Then your view is usually very spectacular. But of course, it's like pros and cons. Uh. So I, it depends on, there are all sorts of factors to look at. Uh. Um, you have to look at whatever. Then of course, the, if the land is steeper, then the cost of construction will also increase a bit. Uh. You know, simple things like how to bring a material up uh, during construction. Uh. All right. Hope that answer, Josephine Lim. Okay, Max. Architecture based on the houses we loading. Do you require extensive geological survey for those structures built? Can you share your experience? No, usually uh, this geological thing, uh, it only comes in later. You know, usually, number one is uh, when, they, when they get the land, number one, they want to see what kind of building or architecture you can create on site. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, of course, first thing is that you have to buy the land. Uh, okay, uh, I've... I've also come across a lot of time, clients get very, very excited. And so the moment they see a land, they can't talk to me. And that's no point. Eh? Then you have to buy the land first, you know. <laughs> yeah, buy the land, then you do the surveying. After surveying, then uh, we get architect to come in to propose something, okay. But for us, those who have slightly more experience, we will come out with something more, something that's buildable, that's buildable, that's doable. Then after that, we will, engage the engineer, civil engineer, to see what is next. So then the civil engineer, when they come in, of course, they look at infrastructure and everything. Then the civil engineer will be, will be able to advise you whether you need a geotech report, you need A, B, C, D, all these things. You know. So until, to me, it's still important you buy a land, you get a building design, or at least a sketch or some kind of concept up before you start talking about all the geotech report, all these things. Uh, because it's like chicken and egg. You don't have chicken, you don't have egg. Of course, you don't have egg, then you cannot have chicken. Something has to start. You know? so, so there's no clear-cut answer to that. But you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, from Mr. Ng, what type of coating being used for fire protection on those steel structurals? Uh, in terms of sand coating or vermiculite spray? How many hours fire rate? This is just a bungalow. It, it, uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't have to follow all this code. Now. It's a bungalow. You know? yeah, well, that's a, so it's a uh, fire code. It's not so critical. Uh, yeah? But he, you are talking about if a, if a commercial building, uh, you know, commercial or public building, then it's different. Uh, then you have to protect with uh, all these things. But if a commercial building, public building, you need to do all this fancy thing, then you might as well use concrete. Huh? Concrete is uh, safer and it's uh, and it's uh, maybe it's slightly cheaper, you know. Mm, okay. Uh, from Tan Rui Yang inside the chat box. Um, hi, architecture. Is there any maintenance required for protecting the timber deck or other timber element like wear and tear for the deck house? I think first importantly, uh, very important, you have to find the right species of timber to use for both indoor and outdoor. Indoor, of course, is quite easy. Uh, uh, like you can like Murabao or whatever, Bala or things like that. Uh, but outdoor is a bit tricky. Like you see the, what do you call it? The, the first project I show, Small Heaven. The owner himself is, a, a, is he supplies his own timber. So, he, he supplied that project, he used a very seasoned bar, uh, marble. Uh, usually, we, for us, we always talk about using Zheng uh, on the outside, correct? But he's so confident with the marble that uh, it's been three years now, I don't hear him complaining. Uh, 
Okay. So, but okay, to maintain, so if you find the right species, you win half of the battle. But of course, a lot of times, uh, the wear and time in terms of aging, this one is up to you. you know, some owner, they like to see the timber, like glossy, glossy, kilat, kilat, you know, like, like brand new. Then you have to maybe get someone to varnish it or to sand and varnish every year. But personally, I thought the aging look, uh, the timber, how it ages is really beautiful. Uh, you know, but some owner, they can take it, some owner cannot take it. Uh. So, that's on my, my whole thing. Uh. But you specify the wrong species, for example, you, you specify Nyato on the outside, then you are, you are asking for trouble. Uh. <laughs> you cannot protect, uh. you cannot maintain. Uh. <laughs> yeah. I hope that's answered, Tan. Um, okay, this question is uh, quite long. Uh, there are three questions there from Miss Char <laughs> uh, from Miss Charmin Chi. Thank you so much for sharing architecture on your uh, creativity, uh, creative design, lovely space uh, surrounded by nature too. Um, I would like to ask, what type of timber were used, and for which part of the house? Uh, I could see timber used for deck, floor, ceiling, and some supporting structures. Um, any use for the main supporting structure? Uh, that is the first question. And then, um, do you source? Uh, where do you source those timber? Is it a tropical, local, or imported wood? And then the third one: um, Do you have any consideration to use FSC certified timber? So, first one: What type of timbers you use for the deck flooring and so on? Okay. For the deck, external external area. Yeah, deck floor. Deck Flooring floor. will be inside. Yeah. yeah, deck floor. It depends on how much weather is receiving. You know? If it's a, if it's deck, for example, some of the bathroom detail, I use a selected area. Timber deck, I've used that before. Uh, deck, for example, the bathroom area that is not too wet. Uh, for example, below the basin. Because I always thought that it would be interesting that like you get an old kampong feeling, you know, you go to the bathroom, you see your, your leg stepping on the deck, you know, then it's not cold, you know, because especially in Janamba, it's very cold, you know, the owner always tell me. So you go inside the bathroom, you, even your wet slipper also cold. You know? So you it nice, your, your feet steps on, a, a, not, not the whole bathroom for sure, a very small area in the deck. So that one, I think, I forgot what did I use. Uh, maybe it's a uh, the Chengang, uh, but external now some some of the contractor they are even more concerned than me. For example, some owner they may be keen to explore some alternative kind of timber, but as far as the contractor is concerned, they don't want to take the liability. You know? So they always would only prefer to install Chengang uh, as of now. Uh. So. Currently, I didn't hear anyone would propose some, anything else, you know. But as I say, the first project I did, some of the external area, they use Marbao themselves because they themselves source, got the, uh, obtained the Marbao themselves. They, they are super confident. Now. So, but if for general public, so I would think that now nowadays for external area, no one dare to use even any other thing other than Chengdao. But Chengau is really expensive now. You know, unless MTC can, can advise on alternative kind of <laughs> outdoor timber, you know. <laughs> because if they use even like, uh, uh, other type, uh, like Palau, and I, I heard that some after four years, five years, they have to change everything. You know? It won't last. Uh. So, sometimes it's a timber board that goes wrong. Sometimes timber board is okay, but the timber support underneath it rots, you know. So if the timber board, it looks okay, but the, it's a support, the beam or the support or the pattern rocks. Huh? So there are all sorts of, uh, uh, but all sorts of issues, huh? but most of them would pre prefer to, to avoid all these things, all Chengna, huh? but Chengna is very expensive. Huh? Whereas the other board, uh, I haven't honestly tried much. I, I tried some, but, uh, but, a lot of owners, they still prefer the original timber look. Right? As you know, nothing beats the original timber look, right? no matter all the fiber cement product. Right? So it's still hard to achieve this kind of the warmth feeling and the, the look and everything. Right? 
Okay, okay. and then, yeah. Uh, next question here. Generally speaking, the houses we saw are in remote area. How much does it cost to build remotely as compared to the normal area? Um, what are the element items that cost more comparing those two? In a remote area, as I mentioned just now, um, simple things. Uh, I think transportation, uh, you know, like to, to ship a material from KL or slang off to there, number one. Number two, then, uh, then your workers, if they, they can stay there, then it helps to, to reduce the transportation cost. Uh. Then very importantly, the hill slope. Uh, if it's a hill slope, it's very steep. That means how to ship the material from here to here. Uh. Because in, in the jungle context, you cannot use crane, you know, you know crane, uh, you block by trees. Uh. So you have to create even a, a road to go up and all these things. Uh. So, so for example, in a flat area in, in, in Klang Valley, say Klang Valley in Subang, Sha'alam or Cheras flat area, the construction of uh, using concrete is will be cheaper than steel, you know. But when the concrete, same concrete goes to the hill slope, Janabai, you need to ship up 40 feet, 30 feet to the, to the flat, uh, your, your building area, your construction site. Then the cost, the advantage may not be so great then because how, how are you going to get send it up there? It's not easy. You know? So at the end, maybe by using steel, which will be otherwise slightly more expensive in Clank Valley, but because steel, you just go up there, you erect it, on, on, you just erect it. You know? So it saves time, it saves manpower and all this stuff. So it, 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 it depends. Uh. So this, this question is very hard, but generally there's a small premium uh, in, in a, in a not so much on a rural, but on a hill slope area, on a, on a steeper slope, you know, that compared to, say you are in a rural area, but it is flat. So I don't think that it will cost that much. Huh? But in a rural and it's steep or just steep, huh? <laughs> then the, the cost will go up. Huh? Okay, hope that answers your question. Okay, from Ling Tan, thank you for your insight. You mentioned about indigenous material method just now. Have you worked with bamboo before? Um, indigenous, meaning that uh, the local way, local method. Uh, but whether you say you use uh, clay to create your own brick, this one I, I haven't. Uh, and uh, we still use the industrial material commonly available. The only indigenous sometimes Maybe, for example, they found some funny method. They may try, I've seen some of them, they found some wood on site. They try to use to make landscape benches or some landscape furniture or things like that. Uh. So, but in terms of like, you know, the people in Africa, you, you take some, some stone, some rock to build your own wall, this one, not, not yet. Yeah. Okay. Um... More question here coming in. <laughs> How much on average would the total cost be, including surveying, safety regulations, and materials uh, such as deck house and fan house, for example? That one deck house and fan house was done 10 years ago, so cannot be compared. Uh, but uh, generally, as I say, uh, the last two, three years, it costs have gone up quite a lot. Uh. Okay, a uh, survey fee, all these are quite standard. Uh, you can ask a surveyor, it's not so much. Uh, Okay, so in terms of, but one thing for sure, just like anywhere else, uh, in terms of construction, uh, economies of scale does help. Uh, uh, the only advice I can give, for example, you build a small house, doesn't mean you can take the market rate times your square feet, yeah. right? So if it's a very small house, somehow it could be a lot more expensive because for the contractor to mobilize their whole team to go up to say whatever your site or wherever it could be around Bentong or whatever to stay there and work on a period of time is quite costly. Lah. So to them, they have a minimum cost. So what I find that the building, when it's slightly larger, grow larger, and the cost, due to economies of scale, the cost per square feet usually it will come down slightly. Lah. Of course, you won't be come down by half, lah. you know, it will become much more economical. Yeah. But all these things, it depends on the slope and the protective measure. 
what we discuss is that, for example, cost per square feet is a standard building construction. But what is underneath it? You know, the, whether you need the, a lot of retaining wall, you need a lot of fancy protection, drainage, all these things, is, uh, it's very subjective. Huh? Okay, actually, we do receive a lot of questions here, but uh, because of uh, we are running out of time, so I have to pick uh, maybe one or two more questions, okay? Um, let's see, okay, from David Chin. Thank you, Architecture, for your presentation. Since wood is one of the major components in the construction, what steps are taken or designed to be incorporated into the building to minimize fire risk? The, to the to how to minimize the uh, fire risk. Uh, so maybe a better question for MTC to answer. <laughs> but I I personally dislike wood because it looks really great. Uh, honestly, it looks really great, and then it's really nice to touch. You know, I mean, and nothing beats a good old fashioned wood. Uh. So, um, but due to the these days, the cost of wood is getting so getting higher and higher. So I find that most of the time, uh, people use wood now getting, the usage of wood is getting more and more selectively. Uh, you know, uh, that for example, critical area where your feet touches the floor or your hand touches or things like that. So uh, in terms of fire protection, maybe this one, one day MTC, maybe you can hold a, hold a talk uh, to advise them. Okay, uh, one last question I'm going to take uh, from Arif Ajmal. As a student interested in pursuing a career in slope architecture, what advice would you give in terms of developing the necessary skills and knowledge um, in this very specific area? Well, actually, <clears throat> actually, if you want, <laughs> uh, as a student, I think, I'm not sure if you can, no, because, it, okay, coming back from me, uh, when I started working, um, it wasn't because I purposely chose a field of slope, you know, like it, it, it never have come to my mind. But when I started working, I prefer something to work with something. I like to deal with details, you know, it's some, design something more attentively and intensively, you know. So I, I, I love that kind of project. So I find that as I started working, I'm more attracted to uh, some kind of smaller firms uh, where you know you're one leg kicking, uh, you do design, you do detailing, and then you go to the site to check. That's how it started. Uh, it wasn't that I put my mind on the well, slope architect only. Uh, I never never come across my mind. So as I, I developed more and more, even before I came over to KL, uh, I started to work on all these small like sort of jewel kind of project, uh, like smaller but very design intensive kind of project. Then as I come to KL, then I got a job offer into this company that also doing a lot of this hill slope project. That's how it started. Uh, you know, so you, you see uh, how you, you can do because <clears throat> for us, uh, very important in architect, you, you have a good all around knowledge, uh, whether it's in hill slope or flat or whatever, it is, it is, you, you, will, you will be okay. Uh. <laughs> I'm not sure you answer your question. Uh, so it's not easy just to look at hill slope. You know? That means you see the problem is you start doing this, then that means non-hill slope, then people will not go to you. You know, this uh, is uh, so you should focus on maybe more like good architectural skill or good detailing skill, including hill slope. Uh, you know, hill slope is part of your package. Huh? Yeah. Okay, thank you so much everyone for the questions. And we have come to the end of our webinar session today. And before we wrap it up, uh, Architecture, do you maybe have any final thoughts uh, to share with the audience? Oh, no, I think, as I say, this is interesting. And uh, I never thought there would be so many questions. You know, I've been to a few talks and no one asked so many questions. So it's, uh, <laughs> I'm very, very glad. <laughs> Ask a lot of sometimes very tough question. I hope I, I help. I, I have uh, at least try to help. <laughs> so, but thank you. It was a, a pleasure talking to you guys. Huh? Thank you, MTC. <laughs>
Okay, on behalf of MTC, we also would like to thank Architecture for taking his time uh, to share his knowledge and also uh, insight at this webinar. Um, as mentioned earlier, we would be grateful if you could kindly provide your feedback by completing our feedback poll later for us to improve our future event. Um, should you wish to know more about the latest happenings on MTC's programs, do follow and like MTC's social media platforms such as uh, Facebook, uh, our LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website. And I also have one final information to share. MTC will be organizing its International Wood and Woodworking Trade Show called the Malaysian Wood Expo 2023 and WE 2023 from 18 to 20th June uh, at the Malaysia International Trade and Exhibition Center, MyTech. So uh, it, it is an event uh, where we showcase this diverse range of product, uh, timber product and also uh, machines. Uh, we will also have product launches, uh, business matching, and also pocket talk. Uh, so mark your calendar and make sure uh, to visit our expo. I hope you find uh, this session uh, insightful. And for those who uh, wanted to have this certificate of attendance, please email me at nonajo.mtc.com. So thank you everyone once again um, for joining us today. I hope you find uh, this session insightful and hope to see you again for our upcoming um, MTC Timber Talk series. Uh, may you have a wonderful uh, long weekend ahead. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.